Morning. Um, I promise you there won't be any singing. Um, so, uh, thank you very much for that uh, very kind introduction. Um, this is actually my first uh, word camp that I've attended since the pandemic. And so, um, for this to be my first one back, and I've never been to Greece before as well, let alone Athens. Uh, it's a fantastic place, so I'm really happy to be here. Um, as mentioned, my title is 10 Things All WordPress Developers Should Avoid. Now, I'm going to make this quite general and not too specific. Now, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, I wanted this to appeal to a wider audience as possible. Even if you're not a developer, you should generally understand most of what I talk about today. And also, I'm fully aware of the fact that my day job is not as a developer, and there's probably some very professional developers out in this audience. So if I get too specific, the Q&As at the end could get quite interesting. So I'm going to avoid that from happening. And the other thing I want to say as well is, within 30 minutes, I'm going to struggle to give answers to the 10 things I mentioned. So in some cases, I'm not. However, if there's something really burning, there's the Q&As at the end, and you can ask. Um, so, for examples of what I wanted to show today, I created a uh, blank test site, and I installed what WordPress.org said were all the popular plugins. Uh, and a couple more that I knew had some interesting features. I installed and activated 33 plugins. I did it so you don't have to. It was a mess, and we'll get to it. The other thing to say as well is that the 10 things I'm going to say today are in no particular order, except for number one. Because when I um, put my name forward to speak here, I came up with a title, like a lot of people do, and a short description. But that's as far as I got. So when I got the call to come and talk, I panicked a little bit. Um, oh, now I need some content. I asked ChatGPT, because that's the thing to do. I've ignored that. Um, you would have got bored quite quickly with what it came up with. So I turned to social media instead. And I asked, what's the things that plugin developers do that you wish they'd stop? And I got overwhelmed with one answer. So in the end, I started asking people, what's the one thing that you wish they'd avoid that isn't this one thing? So, my number one, the first thing up here, is that thing that I told people to stop talking about. And as my only audience participation, I'm going to ask you, what do you think number one was? <laughs> Any suggestions for the, for the thing that annoys people the most that plugin developers keep doing? Hmm? <laughs> it was, it was, no, it wasn't that at all. It was what I call aggressive promotion, or what everybody else said, banners, admin notices. Okay, now it's quite interesting. I'm going to come up with some examples in a minute. It was uh, what people were frustrated about was banners in general, um, not just, although most people said advertising banners. Um, but the frustration seems to be the sheer number. Now, this bit that I call aggressive promotion is just the advertising banners. So there's going to be quite a lot of overlap between my 10 things you'll find today. Um, you know, there is an interesting Venn diagram hiding somewhere in my 10 things of all these different things overlapping. But yes, the main one is banner ads. And here's an example from that site I set up. Um, once I'd activated all those plugins, um, I lost my dashboard. And there were lots of different types of uh, banners up there, you'll see. Um, there is some that are promotional. A lot of them are just saying, oh, you need to go into your settings and do something before this plugin is going to work. Now, I have some sympathies for those, particularly if you know, your support would otherwise get overwhelmed because you forgot to put an API key into a setting somewhere. But some of those don't fall into that category. They're very much kind of like, oh, just, just go into your settings, please, at some point. Um, and also, even the different types of banner ads we have here. There's, there's even one there that's got a completely different width to all the others, which I'm not quite sure is about. Um, 
even how they get dismissed, some have got the X button, some have got links to be dismissed, and that yellow bar at the top, we will get to that. That's an that's a interesting one in point entirely. And that will pop up again. Um, so we've got all these different types. And yeah, this is the kind of thing that people were talking about. Um, so as I was writing this up, I was looking on Reddit. And lo and behold, somebody voiced the exact same frustrations with a very similar looking dashboard. And this is what, we're, this is what we hear from users. Now, this next one, I think, is particularly good. OK. The Roy Kent there is not part of the banner image that came up. I've just put that on because that's how I was feeling when this happened. I think it happened like a week after I'd installed all these plugins. Three new banner ads suddenly popped up. And it's because I have three plugins by the same developer in. And so essentially, the same pop-up appeared three times. And as you can see, it's very big. And the dismiss is only for 12 months. You don't get a full dismiss for this one at all. No. And I actually spoke to the uh, WordPress uh, core plugin team, not core, the WordPress plugin review team, to ask them, kind of like, is, is, is that right according to the guidelines? Dismiss for 12 months? And it's kind of more, it's, it's against the spirit of it rather than anything else. But there's also the other advertising we get as well. So this is a settings screen. And as I said before, a lot of the time, all you've got to do is just put an API key in for a settings. And this is the ex an example here. Go in, put an API key in, save. All of that text is advertising by a little bit of help on the right-hand side. Even the text under the save button is advertising. OK. Um, the help should really be in a little help tab in the top right-hand corner, as is the standard WordPress way of doing this. And the rest of it is just getting in the way of you putting an API key and saving. And how many times are you going to do that in the life of a plugin? One admin is going to come in here once, put an API key in, and save. How much is all that advertising, all that that's getting in the way of what you need to do? What's it achieving? So. Now, I say cheeky at that top bit. I've not looked into this, but I noticed that another plugin that also deals with MailChimp is putting up a banner advertising their product. Now, I don't know whether they're spotting the, if the fact that this is a MailChimp plugin and injecting their own banner in or not. I've, I've not got that far, but it seems a little suspicious. Now, WordPress org's own guidelines say Advertising within the WordPress dashboard should be avoided as it is generally ineffective. Now, the next three are under a section that I call Don't Make It All About You. Look at me, 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 plugins that feel the need to stand out. And here, oh, no. And so the first one is inconsistent and confusing menus. And here are a few examples. Now, this is from the test site I set up. So let's start up in that top left-hand corner, the Mini Orange plugin. Okay, um, it's not going to have a um, it's not going to have a graphic the same size as everybody else. It's going to have one twice the size of everybody else. And also, as well, I put this one up as it's a nice example of a menu which you question whether it should even be cluttering up your WP admin bar, because all of the submenu options shouldn't, you know, they just, it's either selling or in the case of plugin configuration, it should be under settings. Ideally, all of that should be under settings. Okay, so you end up with a very cluttered menu bar through all of these plugins which feel the need to be on that menu bar simply so that they can call themselves out. Now, if we go to the bottom left-hand corner, this plugin, I should say, I think has now changed this behavior since I did these screenshots. But essential add-ons there, purple background. Now, one of the things I did when I set up my test site was I changed the default colors of the dashboard, which you can do. Not everybody realizes you can do that. Obviously, a lot of developers don't know you can do that um, because it breaks a lot of things when you do that. 
But at the same time, it's great for accessibility to be able to do that. And so essential add-ons, purple background. And if you look at the uh, dashboard image in the middle, you can see that the little next to updates, the little um, uh, notif notifications bubble should be beige in my color scheme. So essential add-ons has decided to go for red. So they're even overriding that color as well. And if you go to the right-hand side, you can see the consequence of this. All-in-one WP migration. How many people can see their nice, uh, nice, nice little graphic next to the menu? It's, it's a bit difficult to make out. I think with the default colors, you can see it absolutely fine. But because I've changed my colors, you can't. And there's lots of examples there of people changing default colors, including their little graphical image as well. Now, the middle one. Um, I've, I've, I bought up. I'm going to have an interesting conversation um, with one of the sponsors later on, I suspect. Google, Google Site Kit. This is an example of plugins that feel the need to push themselves to the top of the admin bar because they're obviously more important than posts and pages are. Because when you go into WordPress, <laughs> when you go into WordPress, you're not thinking about posts and pages, are you? No, you're thinking of going to Google Site Kit every time. And there's many other plugins that do the same thing as well. Um, so those are just a few examples. And let's move on. OK, so number three, don't take over the user process. So again, another example screenshot. This was, um, I went into that mini orange plugin. Okay, now first of all, they've decided a little modal white pop-up as part of their settings. I think you can actually just dismiss that and still get to the settings, so I don't quite know what that's about. But it's that yellow bar again. Because they have decided to, instead of using the standard admin notices, they've decided to put their own JavaScript notification bar in. It conflicts with this little pop-up. And so now we have it in, in the exact middle of the screen, overlaying everything else. Um, the, the other advantage, or disadvantage, as I like to call it, is that that word, word fence, if you couldn't read who it was, it's word fence, um, that word fence um, bar also appears in the block editor as well. You can't get rid of it. It's everywhere, which might be why they did it that way. Now, um, right, and here's another example of what I mean by this as well. There was a couple of examples of plugins that did this, and that is once activated, a little pop-up appeared um, in the plugins list, and you can't access the plugins list until you action their little pop-up. Okay, why? Why, why? why do they feel the need to stop me from accessing my plugin information for, for this. It's, it was, and, and I say, there was two examples of this, just in those, the most popular plugins that I installed. But there's also plugins I found as well that when you activate them, they take you straight into their setting screen. So if you've just activated a number of plugins, like, you don't want to have anything to do with those other plugins. No, I'm going to guide you straight into my setting screens because that's the most important thing right now. Number four, avoid creating your own UI. I'm not going to go into too much detail, and I think we kind of know what I mean by this, but I was talking to somebody about this yesterday, actually, and, and, and I think there may not be a general consensus on this one, um, but, yeah, when you come into, for new users, for all just non-experienced users coming in and using, uh, coming in using WordPress, going into a menu or going into any kind of screen within WordPress and finding they have implemented how their menus and everything else works completely differently is not the greatest user experience. And when you have multiple plugins, and as I say, these were just all examples I took from those popular plugins that I installed. All different plugins using completely different you know, methods and styling and all the rest of it, take, breaking you out of the standard WordPress look and feel to show you, you know, to, to do things in completely different ways. Now, at one point as well, I decided to speak to the uh, plugin review team uh, at WordPress.org to see what, 
What's the one thing they'd like to uh, developers to uh, avoid doing? And they, they said lack of data validation. In fact, Mika, for all those who know Mika, she was pretty outspoken on this one. So I, I'm, I'm going to quote her directly. Sanitize early, escape late, do not make excuses about one and two, oh, and use a darn nonce. I might have reworded that last sentence. Number six, loading unnecessary content. This one came up quite a bit as well. Plugins that will load scripts that just aren't needed at that point. So if you've written a plugin that performs some kind of action in a post or page, um, and the postal page your company viewing doesn't need that script, don't load it. And the other thing as well is loading scripts that are designed for the back end in the front end and vice versa. Number seven, leaving content behind. So um, this is, um, yeah, so when somebody uninstalls your plugin, which I'm sure they won't do, but if they ever do, um, does it leave anything behind? So many plugins leave behind um, data within the options table or even entire tables themselves if your plugin created one. Um, WordPress offers an uninstall hook, which you can use, or better still, um, if uh, in your plugin folder, you can create a, a file called uninstall.php and just put a script in there which removes all the data. So this is just to show I uh, practice what I preach. This is one of uh, my uh, uninstalls from one of my uh, plugins. Um, I also do a talk about WordPress transients. So if I didn't mention them at this point, I would be failing in my duties. Um, they are really terrible at housekeeping themselves, transients are. So if your plugin uses transients, clear them out, which is what some of this be a gun installer of mine is having to do. The TLDR of all that is try not to leave a footprint behind. Number eight, forgetting accessibility standards. Um, this is probably the biggest one for me um, that I need to do better as a plugin developer myself. And um, so keyboard navigation, screen reader compatibility, and just proper contrast. And of course, don't colour your menu options. Number nine, ignoring code quality checking. PHP CS is your friend. This is a personal one to me, this one. I love PHP CS. There's lots of tools available um, for developers to check the quality of their code and to make sure that it follows you know, standards and, and guidelines. Um, PHP CS in particular is, is the one I use. Um, and there are lots of rule sets that you plug into PHP CS and it runs through your code. And there are some WordPress rule sets. And, you know, uh, it's really, well, the hardest bit I find of PHP CS is just installing it in the first place. If you've got over that hurdle, it's easy after that. Okay. You can integrate it directly into your code editor. So in the case of mine, every time I try and save one of my WordPress files, it will automatically scan through and tell me if I've got anything wrong or if I'm missing anything. The great thing about things like this is the fact that it actually covers off a lot of the, some of the things I've been talking about already. So, you know, a lot of the things like the accessibility and all the rest of it, it'll highlight issues. It'll highlight the security issues that Mika was talking about. And number 10, finally, is a big question mark. And there's a reason for that. I had a lot left over, and there wasn't a tenth thing that I was really passionate about. So, I had these left over. Flooding users with too many updates. Deactivation surveys, just don't. Overuse of important in CSS. Pushing forum support off of .org ignoring the WordPress APIs, not providing hooks or filters in your code, creating new database tables, abandoning your plugin, or if you have to, how to do it properly. So these were just a few of the things that could have been number 10. So I had a great idea. We've got a Q&A. So if anybody feels passionately about what they think number 10 should be, here's your opportunity. Q&A, please 
tell me what you think number 10 will be. Now, I've set up this um, URL for anyone, and at the moment there's not much there. It's a holding page right now. But I'm going to put up all the slides and things like that from here. But the other thing I'm going to do over the next few months is all the items that I've talked about today um, are going to be, um, I'm going to write separate uh, posts for them. And including those ones that could have made number 10. Um, and in a lot more detail. And then I'm going to put them onto here as well. So if anybody wants to know anything more. Also as well, if there's any of these things I've spoken about today that you'd like me to write about first, let me know in the comments on that page as well. And I'd be happy to. And that, I think, with 10 minutes to spare somehow, normally I ramble forever and ever, but somehow with extra time to spare, I've got to the end of the presentation. So, so thank you very much, and we'll have some Q&A. Sorry, is my mic on? It is great. Thank you. That was a great speech. Thank you very much for that talk. I think I'm probably guilty of doing all of those 10 things, probably only just yesterday. Uh, but that was great. So we've got uh, some time for Q&A now. We've got 15 minutes. Um, I'm going to kick off the first question, if that's all right. So of those 10, which is your personal most important? And you can't choose CSS important. So which one would you choose? <laughs> Um, probably just based on the fact that I've had more dealings and it's a personal annoyance to me was probably the menus, which is probably why I took quite a bit of time early on that one. Um, I'm actually, it, 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 the menus bit annoys me so much. I'm actually at the moment writing a plugin that will actually just trawl through the admin menus and tidy them all up automatically and just throw the stuff out that shouldn't be there and put things under settings and all the rest of it because it's just you know um i can't see an easy solution to it but um yeah i, I think the uh, menus and just trying to find things you know sometimes i don't know about anybody else you know just clicking on settings and tr the number of times i clicked on settings to find the settings for something and i couldn't find it and it's like well, it must be somewhere else and it turns out it was there, it just, because it's not in an alphabetical list, it's just, I just missed it. And install a few plugins and that settings can get quite large. So, yeah, um, you know, uh, much better uh, method of uh, viewing and, and a tidier menu system, I think. I think it's when you log into a site and then you have to scroll all the way down the screen on the left-hand side and it just keeps on going. Yeah, and I said as well, you know, that those plugins that are, are, are at the top and all the rest of it, it's just even just starting off, where is it to begin with, let alone, and then as I say, you know, plugins that don't put their settings under settings, that decide, you know, that there are plugins out there where, you know, that there's no submenu options under the menu. They put a menu option in, there's no submenu options, and when you, pl connect, when you click on the menu, it just takes you into settings, and it's like, why is that there? Why is that not under settings? It's, it's an entire menu option just for something that shouldn't be there. So. All right, thank you for that answer. I am guilty of making another settings menu that says site settings as well. I've done that before. <laughs> don't, don't do that either. That's very bad. Uh, do we have any questions from the floor for David? I have one. Where do I go? Hang on. So, oh, we need a mic up, up there, please. We could have one. All right, you are. Hi, hi, hi. Thanks. Great talk. So um, I have a question about the custom UIs for the admin. Um, and I agree with like the, these are awful and we, and we know it. But on the other hand, like WooCommerce, the new uh, admin UI is also a custom UI. And I, I agree it's, made, it's done properly. It's, it's nice. But on the other hand, still, if an automatic owned company is doing things like this, how we can expect developers to stop doing so? I thought that might come up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I talked about, you know, um, plugins that put themselves at the top of the menus, I know Jetpack is one of those that does exactly that. So, um, 
Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not here to talk for automatic or WordPress more generally. Um, you know, whatever the solution is, these are annoyances for users. And that's what I'm here to present and, and what the solution to that is. And I understand why people use the custom UIs, why people are doing a lot of these things. It's all about trying to promote your plugin. And we go back to that, that, you know, that option of the me, me, me. There is a reason why they want you to look at them. They want to promote their plugin. But it's this balance, I think, between how much do you gain from that versus how much annoyance you're causing. I mean, I know that there are some plugins that are so popular that people install them despite kind of like all their grumbles and all the rest of it. And, and you know, and yeah, it's, it's a difficult one. It's, I, I am not marketing. I do not, I would love to know the numbers to know if some, how some of these things, particularly like the banner images, how much that really does gain versus how much it turns away customers, it annoys customers. And, and as well, it might actually not stop a sale, but how much is the frustration of a customer versus the loss of a customer? What's, what's, the, you know, what's that worth in comparison? And I do, do wonder if, because it's not a loss of a customer, it's just a frustration, whether that gets lost sometimes. Um, yeah, <laughs> if all plugins look like core WordPress when you installed them, then, you know, most people probably wouldn't even realize there's some kind of like premium product or, or whatever, you, you know, there'd be kind of no, so the upselling method is the bit that frustrates a lot of the time. And so it'll be just the same for like Woo and, and anyone else trying to do that promotional stuff. The UI bit, yeah, it, it's another way of allowing it to stand out in some way. But yeah, um, I, th I think the banner ads at least doesn't confuse the customer, whereas things like the UI can do. Because, you know, when you've got whole screens where things operate in a completely different way from everything else, that is just going to cause confusion for people. Thank you. Thanks for the question. Uh, do we have any more questions from the floor? Anyone else want to put their hand up? Yeah. On over there, please. Hello, um, I've got a potential 10th one, forgetting about internationalization and the volunteers who help with translating. So I know that there are quite a number of plugins that basically get translated for free by volunteers. And as a plugin developer, you can support them in that. So for example, if you've got a premium plugin, be nice to your translators. Indeed, yes. There's another option for number 10. Do we have one more question down there, I think? Yeah, there, please. Hi, thanks for the great, great talk. Um, I, I would like to add uh, some more about internationalization. Um, please, uh, there are so many languages in this room here. Um, assume uh, the string can be double the length. If you have a button with fixed size uh, and the German or Russian translation is two times uh, as long, uh, uh, the button layout uh, breaks. Uh, so as a developer, please don't use fixed uh, width for things and assume every string can be double the size. That is a very good point. I did not, something I'd not appreciated myself, yes. Is, is that something you've come across in support issues at all? I, I know I, as a developer, I especially find that, as, as you said, with German strings, they can tend to be very long and need hyphenation in a specific place. I have, no, I have not come across, I hadn't appreciated that myself. I will be bearing that one in mind my, for myself in future, right. yes. One more to add so, to the list. Uh, any more questions from the floor? Uh, over there, please. Hi. Um, well, less of a question, but more of an addition. Um, besides using more hooks, filters, actions, please add proper documentation. Even though we can all st scroll through the um, code, it's more convenient to just read proper documentation on your website instead. And update it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, any more questions from the floor? Anyone uh, with a question? 
No, just see if we've got any on social media. All right, well, I think we'll call it a day there then. Um, oh, we do have one more question. I'm sorry. Great, thank you. We have a few more minutes. So like, like most of us, I'm also annoyed by most of the stuff, but I, I kind of feel like this is not coming because people just want to annoy us. There's probably a reason for it. And I suspect that all of this annoying marketing, advertising thing probably just works. So I doubt that we'll get plugin developers to stop doing it as long as it pays, unless there's an alternative in some way. So yeah, um, one thing I often think about, all this upselling stuff is probably only relevant to the administrators of the site because a normal user is not in, in the position to buy the pro version and install it anyway. So maybe it's something like a, uh, only showing that stuff to the people that actually can act on it or something like this. So some compromise because just complaining probably won't help if it pays. <laughs> yeah, I understand what you're saying there. Yeah, uh, Whether um, the, the, the fact that the people who probably can't afford the premium products are the ones you're left pushing it all to is whether that's therefore the best solution doesn't seem good <laughs> compromise yeah um yeah uh, and this is one of the reasons why i said that i don't, didn't have the time for the answers because the, the question around the promotional side i think is probably long you know just to talk about that alone would probably longer than this talk could be anyway it's 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 a it's a complicated question. Uh, but what I think I'm asking more for today is people to think about it when they're doing these things. You know, as I said, you know, that setting screen where you're only going to use it once and admin is just going to use it once. What was the point in all of that advertising, all of that clutter on that screen? It was, for me, it was pointless. I don't think that served any purpose. You know, some of the adverts, some of the banner advertising, that one which decided to duplicate itself three times, well, what's the point there? You know, kind of like, why, why did they not think that, you know, kind of like, you know, only do that the once. It's, it's a duplicate of the same thing. It's just about thinking about how much of an impact that's having on the user experience and just making it a bit better. You know, if, if there's one thing I can ask from all this today is good, you know, we're not going to resolve all of this, but we can make it a little bit better than it is right now and just give users, particularly the less experienced users, a slightly better um, experience than they get right now. Thanks for the question. Um, I, I seem to remember seeing something on track about a, um, a feature notification uh, plugin to clear up admin notifications. I don't know if that's still happening, and that may help with those sorts of banners, but I think... I, I, I was uh, on Contributor Day yesterday, and actually, when I heard that, that was one of the tables, I actually went to that table just because I was talking about um, notifications today. So, yes, it is still active, um, but uh, in, you know, anyone else who would like to get involved in the notifications feature, the idea is it'll hopefully go into core. There's an API as well as a interface to display notifications, and it works like you see notifications elsewhere, that all of the banner ads and eventually things like email and such like might then get pushed to a little icon and a little sidebar notification system um, out of the way a lot more. Um, banners will still happen in certain cases because there's still going to be times when you do need to push something more urgent in front of the, uh, in front of the user. But yeah, it'll just help tidy everything up that we've got there now. So. Um, I'm, I'm just loosely involved. I only found out about it yesterday, so I'm not, I'm not running it. So. But uh, if, if anybody wants to get involved in the notifications uh, feature, uh, please do. Right, thanks. Uh, any more questions from the floor? Oh, we've got one more over there, please. We've just got a couple of minutes left. Thank you. Uh, you mentioned uh, custom admin UI, and a lot of plugins are doing it. Uh, can you give a couple of good examples where a plugin has a lot of settings that need to be neatly organized and understandable and convenient that is not using a, a custom admin UI? 
like an, an example that plugin developers could follow or base their new developments on? So an example of a plugin that for, for the settings that's like use, it doesn't use a, its own UI and you think is a good example. Not off the top of my head, because I, I did spend my time looking for bad examples for this, so <laughs> I wasn't actually looking for good examples. But I, I think, personally, uh, the way I was thinking, I, admittedly, all the plugins I've ever written have not been commercial ones, so I'm coming from a different place for this. But certainly whenever I'm writing something, you know, I mentioned in those things that could have been a number 10, I says to use the WordPress APIs. And I think that's quite key, using more of the WordPress APIs to actually make your screens just look like the core thing. And this is what I try and do, this is what I try and do when I write plugins as much as possible. I, you know, I'm proud of my plugins and I, you know, I want them to look like they came with WordPress. I think that's, I think that's a good thing, you know, to, to show off, you know, to people, hey, you know, kind of like install this and it, it'll just blend in the back. Of course, for something commercial, that isn't what you want. You don't want it to blend into the background and become invisible. But that for me, I think is actually, for those that want to, you know, a good example for me is that, does it look like it came boxed with WordPress and isn't a plugin. Great. Thanks very much for the question. I think we're going to wrap up Q&A there. Everyone, everyone here wins a prize, and that prize is to go back and refactor all your code. So <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> well, I'd like to thank uh, David again. Would you give it up for David, please? Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. Yeah, one sec. <laughs>